Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about lightning here and I uh, just want to let you know that lightning is a very dangerous event. It's the uh, n number two weather killer in the United States and about a thousand people are injured from lightning and a hundred people die from lightning each year in the United States. In fact, we've had about 40 people this year that have already uh, have died from lightning, including some very close to this area. So I'm going to teach you about how lightning forms and some of the safety issues to go through when you see a thunderstorm or hear a thunderstorm around the area. So let's talk about lightning. What is lightning? A lightning is a huge spark. It comes from the cloud, the ground, or even between the two. The, the types of lightning are cloud to cloud, cloud to air, and cloud to ground. It can occur anywhere, but most of the time it occurs in the Midwest and the Southeast, with Florida being the lightning state of the United States. But keep in mind that lightning does occur everywhere in the United States, even out in the West. And in fact, uh, a lot of the forest fires out in the West are caused by lightning. Now, lightning can even occur over strange places like a volcano. Uh, so how does lightning form? Well, basically in a thunderstorm you have ice and water. Ice carries a positive charge, rain carries a negative charge. And you have these two elements in the thunderstorm that are colliding against each other and they create an extreme buildup of energy. And the only way for the atmosphere to deplete this energy is to produce a lightning bolt. So here we go, we have a thunderstorm that's developing in the afternoon. And you, there's a little guy there down there that's underneath the thunderstorm, which is probably where you don't want to be during a thunderstorm. And we're going to take a look at this little black box in the middle of the thunderstorm to see what's going on to start this process of a lightning bolt. Inside that little box we have snow or ice and, and rain. And what happens is that the ice takes a positive charge and the rain takes a negative charge. So once we get a thunderstorm to develop, we have this ice and rain in there. And the ice floats to the top of the thunderstorm, and the rain goes to the bottom of the thunderstorm. So we have positive charges in the top of the thunderstorm, and negative charges in the bottom of the thunderstorm. And what this does is it attracts positive charges at the surface. So when you think of a thunderstorm, think about opposites attract. You're looking for negative charges to attract the positive charges. So we'll take a look at what happens after the thunderstorm forms. We have a bolt of lightning that begins to approach the ground and it's bringing negative charges to the ground and it wants to attach to those positive charges at the surface. When that happens, you see the bolt of lightning. And after the main bolt of lightning, we have what are called return strokes or flashes. It's basically, when, you, when you're out in the open, you see a bolt of lightning, you'll see it flash a couple times and just continue flashing. Well, what's really happening is that another bolt of lightning is going through the same place that that previous bolt of lightning occurred. So this is what it looks like in real time. In real time, it's very fast. And that's what it looks like in real life. And that was taken out in Oklahoma. So lightning tends to strike the tallest object out, out in the open. So it's very important to try not to be the tallest object. And here's an example of Eiffel Tower, uh, the shuttle landing in Florida, and uh, Ravenel Bridge right here in Charleston Harbor. But it doesn't always strike the tallest object. So be aware that just because there's taller things around you, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily safe from lightning can even strike planes as this plane was taken off in Japan it was struck by a lightning bolt. The common ways that people are struck by a lightning is a direct strike if you're out in the open you'll see the negative charges and the positive charges coming together a bolt of lightning. Now it's important to notice that, that picture that came up just a little bit ago those kids were actually on a mountain and those charges were going through them so if you ever experience that kind of sensation like a tingling effect and your hair starts to rise it's very important to crouch down and uh, try to stand on the balls of your feet because you are about ready to be struck by a bolt of lightning now there are places that i'll show you that you do not want to be when uh, there's a thunderstorm outside and one of those instances is standing under a tree 
It's very, very dangerous to stand under a tree during a thunderstorm. We call these side flashes. Basically, the bolt of lightning comes down in the tree and hits you from the side. That's why it's called the side flash. Here's an example of a lightning bolt actually striking a tree, the video I have here. That's exactly why you do not stand beneath a tree during a thunderstorm. How far away do you think he was there? From there, I, this person was probably about 50 feet. And if he was outside, even through the ground, he could feel the effects of that bolt of lightning striking the tree. And this is exactly what can happen if you're out on the beach or in the water. Lightning can strike a certain distance away, 50 feet, 100 feet, and still affect you. So it's very important if you're out on the beaches and you hear thunder to take shelter. One of our deaths um, in this uh, area just down the road uh, down in Hilton Head this year was a man that was uh, walking and running on the beach uh, with a thunderstorm not too far away. So we had a death uh, very close to here just on the beach. And then lightning can even happen through metal, wires, or fences. So if you're standing along a fence during a thunderstorm, it's a very dangerous place to be. As it was for these cows here. All these cows were standing along a fence during a thunderstorm and they didn't make it. So let's talk about lightning entering a house and why it's important to, uh, to stay away from electronics. You want to stay off of corded phones. Lightning can travel through the wires into a, a phone, and it's actually the number one killer inside the house is being on a phone during a thunderstorm. Now you can also uh, you want to stay from from microwaves, from refrigerators, from showers, even if the, for younger people playing games, game units. You want to stay off of those during thunderstorms. So if you hear the thunder, go indoors. If the thunder roars go indoors. Uh, we have some safety measures. There's called a 30-30 rule and basically what it's telling you is that if you hear thunder and count to 30 seconds and you can hear thunder before you count to 30 seconds again, it is too close. Uh, if you, it, it, once you're inside the home and uh, if you still hear thunder, it's important to wait 30 minutes until the, you hear the last sound of thunder. Then it's okay to go outside. And the reason for that is that we have a, a rule, which is basically, and I used to do this as a child, was if you see the lightning stroke, and then you count seconds. And for every five seconds, that lightning stroke was one mile away. So it's a nice thing to do, even when you're sleeping and you want to see how close if the storm is moving away or towards your house, you can count seconds to find out if it's one mile away or two or three or four miles away. And so that's where that safety rule comes from. <laughs> and one of the safety measures of why we use that 33 rule is a, a bolt from the blue. And as you can see, lightning can strike over 10 miles away. And it's actually, the bolt from the blue is one of the main reasons why people get struck by lightning, because they're still outside, they're gardening, they're on the beach, and they don't realize that a thunderstorm's even around the area. But it's very dangerous. In fact, the two photos that have shown up here were taken out here in the harbor. They were about three months ago. So it's, it's a very dangerous thing. What causes the loud, booming sound of thunder? That's a very good question, actually. Uh, what happens is that lightning is so hot, in fact it's about 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, three times hotter than the surface of the sun. And what that does is that it rapidly expands the air, which creates thunder, what we know as thunder. And basically if you're outside and you're wondering why does thunder happen after lightning, well it's because lightning actually is light and it approaches you much faster than than thunder, than the sound. So light travels faster than, or faster than sound. So I'd like to thank uh, John Jensinius, our lightning expert, for helping uh, uh, help me uh, create this, this slideshow. <laughs>